Governor-General of the Commonwealth of Australia, General, the Honourable Sir Peter Cosgrove. I would also like to welcome the Honourable Kim Wells, Member of Parliament and Minister for Police and Emergency Services and Minister for Bushfire Response. I wish to give a special welcome to all those here who have been our sponsors Generally don generously donating amounts large and small that have been crucial in building and equipping a station that can meet all our needs, making the generosity of the government and the CFA even more effective in the final product. Lastly, I wish to thank the members of our community who have come along today to support us in this new beginning and to take pride in the partnership that makes an effective CFA of local volunteers working with the community. Now, with great pleasure, I call upon the Governor-General formally to open our Main Ridge Fire Station. Well, I'd like to uh, add to John's uh, acknowledgement of the ancestral uh, traditional owners of the land, the Boonwurrung people, uh, my own respects and uh, pay my respects to the elders, past and present, and to any other elders of other nations or tribes who are here today. Um, I thank John and Ian for their welcome outside, their, their hosting today. Uh, it's a really a joyous and important occasion. Joyous for me in that I get to see a community uh, expressing itself in that great volunteerism which so characterises Australia. The volunteerism, of course, uh, through the Mainridge uh, Rural Fire Brigade, where uh, so many of the people who participate do so as an additional task within their lives. It's not the main thing they do. Although, from time to time, it might well be the most important thing they do. But the volunteerism I'm talking about is the philanthropic uh, efforts such as you'll see on the back of this program. Scores, probably hundreds of names in there from individual philanthropists to businesses and they describe a geographic area uh, which is of course amongst the main ridge responsibility but as we know Philanthropy knows no geographic boundaries, and I'm very sure some people from far afield have what I'm truly contributed. All of Australia holds its breath during bushfire season, and it's not long before somewhere or another in this great wide brown land, fire comes to ravage whole communities, rural economy putting lives, livestock, and livelihoods at risk. Like so many other Australians, when those terrible bushfires occurred in another place, but not so different to here, not so long ago, I was horrified at the scenes of devastation and the impact of fire and its ravages on people's well-being, their optimism for the future. But like all of you, I was uplifted to see those hundreds, indeed thousands, of people 
who rally to stop the fires, to divert them, to save property, to save livelihoods, and of course to save lives. And like you, we're all impelled in the aftermath to dig deep, to do whatever we could, not only to help those whose lives had been so drastically affected, but to show with the same fortitude in a different way, the sort of resolution, determination, indomitable spirit of the firefighters who put their own lives on the line and who will do so every time there is a need. I was at a, a memorial service in St Patrick's Cathedral in Melbourne in the aftermath of the shooting down of the Dutch aircraft, of the uh, Malaysian aircraft over the Ukraine. And at this memorial service, we were extending our condolences to all the bereaved, the vast majority of whom were in St. Patrick's. And in amongst all the solemnity of that service, there were two songs that were sung uh, in a more modern style. They weren't hymns. They were done by some brilliant young singers and a string quartet and a person on the guitar and another on the keyboard. And if you were watching the service, you might recall, I won't uh, describe the first song, it was beautiful and uh, very evocative, but the, the second and last song sung right at the end of the service was a version of the very popular Australian ballad, I Am Australian. It was a version of that ballad that was done in the aftermath of the Victorian bushfires. And it was done in slow tempo and it was replicated there in the cathedral, sung by a lady called Katie Noonan beautifully. And the last line, I think, epitomises uh, the Australianness uh, that is represented by the CFA, by the Rural Fire Brigades, by people like the Main Ridge Rural Fire Brigade. And it finished on this note, it says, it, uh, in that one that which would finish, I am, you are, we are Australian, he said, uh, you're not alone, we are with you, we are Australian. And that says it all. And that says what we are here today, to inaugurate, to celebrate and rededicate ourselves as a community and these men and women who will operate right at the forefront of the protection of the community come the inevitable next time they're called to save lives and property as a result of a bushfire. Uh, I had a prepared speech here. You just heard what I wanted to say. <laughs> I think it's a magnificent facility. Nothing less for the people who will need to operate here to store their kit, to quarter to house all of their equipment, to train, to turn up for training and to come here before and after operational missions to fight fires. They'll come here to get their new orders, to refresh themselves, to be given provisions by the indomitable people such as the CWA and then go out again. They deserve no nothing less than this magnificent facility so it's now with great pleasure I declare the Main Ridge Volunteer Rural Fire Station open. Thank you, John, for that introduction. His Excellency, we are deeply honoured to have you here. Today, I'd also like to acknowledge uh, our other special guests um, today, Kim Wells, Minister for Police and Emergency Services, Martin Dixon, Minister for Education. What a wonderful day, an exciting day for Main Ridge uh, Fire Brigade. 
and it's my pleasure to be here to witness this official opening of this new station. The Main Ridge Rural Fire Brigade has a long and proud history, having formed in 1945 and served its community faithfully since that time. Back in those days, the only equipment firefighters had was knapsack sprayers and army boot beaters. Thankfully, firefighting has come a long way since then. With this 21 strong member volunteer brigade continuing to provide a vital service to this community. Today, this small but strong volunteer brigade serves its community faithfully, responding to a range of incidents, including fires, car accidents, and other events. Over the years, the brigade has responded to fires in this area. The most recent was the 1997 Arthur Seat fire, which threatened homes. But as His Excellency mentioned, this brigade also provides vital support statewide when there are major incidents, and that included Ash Wednesday and more recently Black Saturday when crews from this brigade assisted with the fires around Marysville and King Lake. This new station we're opening today sits opposite the site of the original main ridge and is the third station local firefighters have utilised. It is more spacious and boasts three engine bays with drive-through access, car parking, an office, multi-purpose room, kitchen, and might I add toilets, because that's one of the things when you've driven a long way to come here that you look for. I'm always pleased to find toilets at fire stations. I also offer our thanks to the government for their financial support um, in helping to build this new station. Uh, there are a number of new stations that have been built in this four year period and we offer our thanks uh, particularly to the government. This station has cost $789,000 and I too would like to add my thanks to the local community and to the brigade itself for their fundraising that saw $80,000 raised to help make sure this was a first class facility. I'm confident this new fire station will further boost the brigade's firefighting capability and see them protect the community for many years to come. To all CFA members present today, I thank you for your invaluable service and I hope you enjoy your new station. Thanks also to the families who give you your support. Lastly, we are entering the fire season. A day like today is a stark reminder of just how quickly summer has come upon us, even though technically it's still spring. Please place a high value on your safety through this season. Look after yourself and your mates. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Peggy. And now for one of the heroes of the hour, without whose vision, sheer persistence and boldness, we would very likely have neither this station nor the honour of having it opened by no less than our nation's vice-regal head of state. I call upon Mainridge CFA Captain Ian Troutbeck to respond on behalf of our brigade and our local community. Good afternoon, Your Excellency, other distinguished guests, and the members of the Main Ridge community. What a wonderful day it is for Main Ridge to have this wonderful facility and to have it open by the, the, uh, the, excellency, uh, the excellency, um, Sir Peter Cosgrove. And I thank you very much for you accepting my invitation to come. I would like to thank uh, the Shire. Uh, we put a proposal to the Shire about three years ago to obtain this parcel of land to, uh, to build our new station on. If it wasn't for our councillors, who uh, all voted unanimously that we could have this parcel, uh, we would have still been on the old site. So, and it's, it's a wonderful piece of land, and I'm just so very grateful for the Shire for their vision and foresight to give us the parcel of land. Uh, now, uh, to the, uh, just to give you a bit of background, uh, which has already been done, uh, but uh, after Black Saturday, the government decided to give uh, 140 new stations out around country Victoria. We had some wonderful people within CFA who fought long and hard to get Mainridge a new station. 
and I'm glad they fought so hard because this is the evidence of their work. So uh, without those workers who uh, and those, uh, those officers within the CFA, uh, this would not have happened also. So thank you very much. I don't want to go into naming each individual one of you, but you know who you are and we are very, very grateful. Uh, the CFA has about 59,000 volunteer fire brigade people, 1,800 permanent staff, and they have uh, 1,200 odd stations. So we are very lucky to be uh, part of what a very well organised and, and very professional organisation like the CFA. Uh, it's not roughly what my speech had, but I'm uh, ad living a little bit. Uh, I practiced since at 3 o'clock this morning, and, that's, uh, and I'm a bit hoarse now because I was hunting it out. At, at 3 o'clock, there's no one there, to, and the chooks don't care what I say. Uh, I'm also very grateful uh, to all the local residents here in Main Beach who donated. If it wasn't for your contributions to our uh, extension, half of you guys are sitting in the part we paid for, and of course the other half are sitting in the government side. But, uh, uh, if it wasn't for your support, this would not have happened. And it is a station which will give us 50 years plus of wonderful facilities, the size. We have issues with truck size. Every year the trucks get bigger, stations seem to get smaller. So uh, we have so much room in here for a future expansion if we want different firefighting appliances or other pieces of equipment, we have the room in which to put it in. So uh, I am very grateful to all the local residents who have supported us. Which leads me on to the, the community groups. All the charities, the service club, the corporate sponsors have been brilliant. Uh, they have given us so much extra which allows for us to have the, the nicer things in the, uh, within the station. So if it wasn't for the corporate people, uh, also this has uh, been very humbling to think how much they have given from such a wide scope of people. Uh, and finally, the fire season is jumping upon us. It's a, a month earlier than normal, so go home, clean up, prepare, daylight your driveways to allow for the trucks to come in, uh, have a fire plan, and a fire plan which all your family knows what's meant to happen, where it's meant to happen. Uh, and if you're going to leave, leave early. Don't wait for the death knock, because it makes the road terribly congested. So fire plan, prepare, and, uh, and leave early if you need to. And my final word is, have a happy and safe fire-free Christmas, and thank you very much.